I'm going to share with you guys some free books, tons of free books that I picked up. Stick around. Welcome to the channel. My name is Morgan here at The Life of Tillman's. If this is your first time, I am so happy to have you here in this space. I hope that while you're here, you find everything that you need, love, and enjoy right here on the channel. Go ahead, click that subscribe button so that you do not miss any of the videos uploaded on the channel. If you've been with me before, welcome back. I'm excited to share with you guys books because anytime I get books, it's just this whole feeling that I get. But when those books are also free, that is even better, like the absolute best. Long story short, here where we live, our local libraries do a Friends of the Libraries sale every year, um, with the exception of the last two years because of COVID. But prior to that, they did this sale every year. And what they offer are books that they are, I'm guessing, no longer using. I'm still kind of curious as to how they determine which books to offer in the sale. Maybe they have too many copies of them or some of them may be damaged on the outside, things like that. But they offer these books over a three day time period for sale, dirt cheap, nothing typically over $5. And it's not just books, they also do DVDs and audiobooks and CDs. Anything that you would find at the library is offered for sale at this Friends of the Library sale. However, because I am a board member of a nonprofit organization, we are given the opportunity to come in after everyone has purchased everything that they want on the last night of the sale, and we get an opportunity to grab books for free. As teachers, which I am, as a nonprofit organization, which I am a part of, um, and also teachers who are in public schools, any type of uh, person who's in education. So we showed up for this amazing opportunity to grab us some free books. Of course, our first priority was to pick up books for the nonprofit organization and then our homeschool. I have tons of books. Disclaimer, I have not read any of these books. I did look up topics on all of the books, but I may not remember exactly what the book is about. So just bear with me. Um, I will say that there were, they had a section that was for children. So tons of children's books, picture books, chapter books, all of that. They also had boxes that were labeled specifically with all children's books. The kicker to the boxes was that you could not go through them to see and sort through the boxes, you just had to take a full box, which was still awesome. I did not grab any boxes, but we grabbed a few for the organization for our nonprofit and did go through um, and look at them and they had some really great readers and things like that. So if in your area, your library has any type of sale or giveaway or anything, check it out. And if they don't, maybe suggest it. Think about it, libraries get tons and tons of books in every year, new books, so the old things have to go out. But just because they're old doesn't mean that there is not still great quality in those books. We don't just throw away books. I'm curious to know what they do with the thousands of books that don't sell um, for the specific sale or that the nonprofit and, and teachers and educators don't take with them. I'm really interested because when we left that night, there were still thousands of books available. Um, I did go through and just grab books that I thought would be useful for our homeschool, things that I had never heard of before, something that looked interesting. It was kind of like a snatch and grab thing. <laughs> Everyone was really kind, but it was definitely a race to grab the popular books or books that you wanted. They had two separate rooms. One was a better book room and the other one was a general room. Now I say room, but this sale was at our local fairgrounds. The room, one of them was probably the size of two basketball gyms and the other one was about one and a half basketball gyms. So huge rooms, tons of tables, thousands upon thousands of books for dirt cheap, but for us, they were free. So I'm going to go through and share these books with you. The first one that I picked up was about Gwendolyn Brooks and I grabbed this. It says a poet from Chicago. I grabbed it because in our packet that we had for Black History, we were studying the poet Gwendolyn Brooks. So I thought this would be a good addition to add to our uh, packet that we had. Now, all of these, as you can see right here, 
the um, library barcode has been marked off and that lets you know that it is no longer to be received at the library. If we were to go and accidentally slide it in the return, it would kick it back out or put a red flag on it because it's not supposed to be within the system anymore. Um, I started and have not completed taking off the barcodes. It's some work and I have a lot of books. So the next one is um, Shay and Emmy start and break an egg. This is a part of a series. And of course, now any books that I have that I picked up that are part of a series, I have to go find the other ones because you can't read book number two having not read book number one or whatever. Um, so here's this one. That a little glare on it, but okay. The other one I grabbed, Gone Crazy in Alabama, and we have One Crazy Summer. This is a part of a series. I believe this is book number three. It may be two, but we have book number one, Gone Crazy in, I'm not Gone Crazy, <laughs> One Crazy Summer. We have that one. So I thought this is perfect to grab it. The only thing that's probably going to bother me slightly about it is that this one is a hardcover. The one that we bought is paperback. But nonetheless, I am one book closer to completing that series. This one is Betty Before X, and I read a little bit about this. This is the, she was the wife of Malcolm X, or maybe the girlfriend of Malcolm X. They have a daughter together. The daughter is the one who wrote this book. So I thought it'd be interesting. We have not done much and learned much about Malcolm X or his life or those surrounding his life, and I thought this would be a good intro into that. The Stars Beneath Our Feet. I forget who this is written by, David Moore. This is a part of our O Freedom curriculum. I started scanning through this book back in August when we started that curriculum and I was like, I wanna get that book. But at the time I didn't buy it because we had checked it out from the library and I still didn't have to buy it because I got it for free. This is Nikki and Deja. I don't remember what it's about, but it is a part of a series. I believe there are about five or six books within the series. So this will be a nice, it's a thinner chapter book, but a nice little chapter book for our girls to read. It does have some uh, pictures in it as well. So there we go. And for all of these books, this library part, I probably will just take off. Okay, picked up a book on Candace Parker. We have a basketball player. She actually picked that book up on her own. The Mitzi Tulane book. We have another book by Mitzi Tulane, uh, What's That Smell? So I thought this would be awesome. This one is The Secret Ingredient. I don't know how many Mitzi Tulane books there are, but we will get them all eventually. This one is Greetings Leroy. This is about a boy not being accepted in a certain area. He gets a pen pal and starts writing to him. Um, I believe the pen pal is in Jamaica, if I'm not mistaken, or maybe Kenya. I can't remember exactly which one. I know those are really far off, but, um, but it's about friendship and being accepted and, and growing up in a new place. Stitching and pulling. This tugged on my heart because my grandmother used to make quilts and it is about quilting. This is actually a poetry book and all of the different poems that are within the book are based on how people um, and particularly women who did quilting felt about the quilts that they created and why. I thought it was really awesome. Okay, the next book is Belle. The Last Mule at Gee's Bend. This is also a part of, of a series, I believe, but I can't remember. Um, but I did read a little bit about this book and loved it. I thought it was really cute. I don't remember exactly everything, but it, it stuck with me. That's why I have it. <laughs> Ruby's Baby Brother. I'm not sure how we ended up with this. I think maybe Mallory picked it up as she was with me, the girls are with me, um, because we don't have any babies on the way, but it's about Ruby adjusting and how she feels to having a new baby brother. I don't know, this may be something that we give away. <laughs> a song for Jamila. She is um, interested in music and her favorite artist. I want to say she is in another country as well. I cannot remember where, 
but she is in another country. I says, the summer holidays are here and Jamila is bored as a girl can be. All she can think about is the Afro Idols TV final. So when she lands a job in Divine Braids Hair Salon, she can't believe her eyes at the arrival of a glamorous Afro Idols celebrity, Miss Chaka Chaka. But while Jamila's idol dozes and Aunt Beauty designs her star starry hair, a buzzy fly appears on the scene and threatens to ruin everything. Can creative Jamila save the day? It was a cute little story from that part. That's what I read in the beginning. The next one is The Quickest Kid in Clarksville. And this is a book about Wilma Rudolph. These last two books, this is These Hands. I was drawn to this book as soon as I saw it because of Floyd Cooper. If you do not know who he was, he was an amazing illustrator of some awesome, awesome children's picture books um, and other works of art. And he passed away, I believe in late 2021, mid to late 2021. So they had this book, I grabbed that one. And they also had this one by him, which is Ben and the Emancipation Proclamation. Um, both of these books are super inspiring. This one is a boy with his grandfather talking all about the things that he can do with his hands and what he wasn't maybe not able to do. And then this one talks about what Ben was able to do before the Emancipation Proclamation versus what he's able to do after the Emancipation Proclamation. All right, guys, that is my free, all free library book haul. I'm going to peel off stickers and we are going to get reading. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, got some good recommendations out of it. Put me some book recs down below. I'm feeling book shoppy. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to click that subscribe button and I will see you right back here at the Life of Tillman's for another video next time. Bye.